Whenever you see a video of something good happening on the internet, there's always a comment saying, someone tag Ellen DeGeneres underneath it. Ellen had been one of the world's most beloved people, but in 2020, she quickly ended up being one of the most hated ones. Here's how it all went down. In this video, we're giving you our take on how Ellen DeGeneres is losing it all. Before we continue, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications. Let's begin. Ellen shot to fame in the 1980s. This is a time when there weren't many female stand-up comedians that were even considered funny enough, let alone be respected. Ellen began her career in 1981 by doing stand-up at open mic nights in New Orleans. By 1984, she had garnered such a huge following that she was named Stand Up in America by the TV channel Showtime. In 1994, Ellen got her own sitcom on ABC starring as the main character. The show ran successfully for four years and five seasons. Just when people thought she couldn't possibly get any bigger, she did. On April 14, 1997, Ellen was on the cover of Time magazine with the words, Yep, I'm gay, written as the headline, right after she appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show and came out on TV too. Just as the world was getting used to the shock of her coming out, her sitcom character came out as gay in one of the most controversial episode airings of all time, titled The Puppy Episode. On April 30th, only 15 days after she did in real life. After the coming out episode, the show started getting negative feedback for being too gay. And the show ended up running for only one more season before being canceled because of the ratings plummeted. Even then, support for Ellen just kept increasing. She became a role model, an LGBTQ role model and has been for the past 20 years. In September 2003, The Ellen Show was born. In the first four years, Ellen had already won four daytime Emmys in a row and the show became one of the biggest daytime talk shows in history. Her talk show has always been based on her personality as being a generous, good-hearted person. She's always reserved a section of her show to feature regular people who either did something good and selfless or were in need of some help. She'd call these people and celebrate their existence and almost always gave them a huge cash prize or other gifts at the end of the segment. This even created the nickname Ellen the Generous because no one had been that generous on their talk show before. She promoted kindness so much that she even closes every show with her infamous quote, be kind to one another. All went well until late 2019. This was a time where stories came out that showed a not so generous side of Ellen. It started when, on the Ellen YouTube channel, they uploaded a video of Ellen's interview with Dakota Johnson in November 2019. It showed Ellen trying to call Dakota out for not inviting her to her birthday. Dakota shut Ellen down by saying, that's not the truth, Ellen. And when Ellen tried to say it was, she replied, ask everybody. Ask Jonathan, your producer, which the producer nodded. Ellen went on to say that, oh, I probably had that thing, and brushed it off. Turned out that Ellen was at a Cowboys game in Dallas, seated next to the former president, George W. Bush. The video of them seated next to each other sparked controversy. People were angry that being someone that has been through a lot just for her sexual orientation can be seated next to someone smiling and laughing when they were very publicly against the LGBTQ community and who failed to do anything when her home state of Louisiana was hit by Hurricane Katrina and destroyed. In April of 2020, a famous YouTuber, Nikki DeJager, more commonly known to the internet as Nikki Tutorials, was called on her show to sit down and talk about how she was blackmailed and had to come out as transgender before she actually wanted to. After the show aired, Nikki shared her experience as a guest was nowhere close to what she thought it would have been. Nikki revealed that when she got there, she was greeted by an angry, overworked intern, and she was just rushed into her green room, describing the arrival like it was Teletubbies after dark. She said that she couldn't even go to the nearest bathroom because it was reserved for the Jonas Brothers, and all the other ones were also private bathrooms for her guests, while she didn't have access to one. This became a pretty big deal because of the issues transgender people have to face with access to bathrooms all across America. The fact that Ellen is an LGBTQ plus role model, she didn't have something as basic as a bathroom available for Nikki was disappointing, to say the least. Nikki went on to say that the show taught her that it's better to not meet your idols and that she regrets ever being on it. This story went viral and soon people started posting their own incidents on social media. 
At this point, a comedian named Kevin Porter sent out a tweet asking people to reply if they've ever had a bad experience with Ellen. Any stories they have about Ellen being mean. He said that for every story he'd donate $2 to the LA Food Bank. His tweet ended up getting over 2,000 replies. One of the replies was from a waitress named Chris Farrar. She talked about how she was a server for Ellen and her wife Portia. After they were done, Ellen wrote a letter to the restaurant owner to complain about Farrar's chipped nail polish. The nail polish chip wasn't in her food or anything, just missing from Farrar's nail. She had just gotten done with a really long shift and almost got fired because of Ellen's letter. Another reply was from a fan named Danielle Acevedo. She described how she had worked really hard to make a bust of Ellen by hand as part of a competition. She was 15 years old. She worked tirelessly on the sculpture and sent it in with a handwritten letter to Ellen, only to see the bust used as a prop in a segment a few weeks later and given away to an audience member with $500 taped to the bottom of it. Then things got worse. A reply from Allison Freer, who worked at the lot next to where the Ellen show was filmed, talked about a time when they were celebrating their showrunner's 50th birthday and steaks were being grilled outside. Ellen sent out a crew member who asked him to stop because she doesn't eat meat and has a sensitive nose. Allison went on to talk about how Ellen also controls everything her staff eats too. They're not allowed to eat meat or fish or anything else with a strong scent. So if they ever wanted to eat anything for lunch that she didn't approve of, they'd have to sneak on to Allison's lot to hide and eat there instead. Actor and writer Benjamin Seaman replied to this story and added to how much her sensitive nose affects daily function. Any crew member that's about to enter her office must chew gum from a bowl at the office door before being allowed inside. He's added another story about how crew members are told that Ellen picks a person every day to hate and that they should stick it out until the next day when she moves on to another person. This is a common practice on set. On April 6th, while broadcasting remotely from her home because of the COVID-19 lockdowns, Ellen joked about how being quarantined in her home felt like she was in prison. She added that it's mostly because I've been wearing the same clothes for 10 days, and everyone in here is gay. This statement came as very ignorant considering she was quarantined in her mansion in LA and had access to everything she could dream of while prisoners in jail were dying, trapped in jail amid the pandemic. A while after this, Variety posted an article where two anonymous sources told them about how employees of the show weren't getting any information about their working hours or they were even going to receive any pay as the show was being filmed in her home with only four crew members. They ended up receiving slash pay without being notified, leaving many very confused. In July, over a dozen crew members of the show ended up coming forward with their stories of sexual harassment and misconduct against the executive producers of the show. One of the producers, Kevin Lehman, was named in multiple allegations. The employees detailed various events where they were groped and touched without their consent and that Lehman demanded sexual favors from them too. Even though the situation was very serious, Ellen only replied to her via a letter. It read, I told everyone in our first meeting that the Ellen DeGeneres show would be a place of happiness. No one would ever raise their voice and everyone would be treated with respect. Obviously something changed and I'm disappointed to learn that this has not been the case. For that, I'm sorry. On July 28th, radio host Neil Breen talked about how he had a strange experience with Ellen when he was a producer on the Today Show. He said that they had to fly in from Australia to film her segment at their own expense. Once they got there, they were instructed on every single detail. Ellen controlled everything from where the lights went to who could even look at her. One of the producers told them, Neil, no one talks to Ellen. You don't talk to her. You don't approach her. You don't look at her. She'll come in. She'll sit down. She'll talk to Richard, the host, and Ellen will leave. Called the whole experience bizarre. With news stories coming out every day that detail the insane experience people have had with Ellen, her image of being the perfect wholesome human being has been tarnished. This could potentially drive away the sponsors that she uses to fund all the crazy giveaways and cash prizes that are the main attraction of the show, or worse, lead the show to being canceled altogether. That's a wrap for how Ellen DeGeneres is losing it all. What do you think will be the future of the Ellen DeGeneres show? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.